Nikita and uh, thanks for uh, giving a pleasant introduction and uh, a regulatory perspective uh, with reference to specifically now we are looking at the industries. Okay, we are not looking at the municipalities and others. Uh, here I am just only going to touch about industrial perspective and not going into the other sectors. So I have asked uh, to look into uh, these uh, four, uh, three, four questions basically. So I have just uh, listed down these questions. Uh, probably these are the things which I would like to uh, address here and uh, give any questions are there, I will be able to answer them. So the first one is what are the regulations and guidelines uh, in place uh, today for use of fresh water by industries? So that I will be coming to it. And then what are the standards and norms for industrial effluent management? And uh, what are the uh, regulatory measurements or actions taken? And what is this impact? And then uh, uh, how you comply, compliance, how you check? So these are the basic uh, issues. I think I will take you through one of the one by one. And uh, first one is uh, we are talking about uh, use of fresh water. So far, uh, there are no such uh, guidelines or regulations telling you that you can take only this much quantity of water. And industries are uh, uh, in fact uh, deciding what is their requirement and accordingly they, if they are large industries, they prepare an impact assessment report and then they take environmental clearance from the ministry or the uh, no objection certificate from the state pollution control board before they go ahead and uh, start commissioning the industry. So, but very recently we have Central Groundwater Authority, they have come out with guidelines. This is as recent as September 2020. So there were previous some uh, guidelines were there, but uh, I am going to hear. So these are the specific guidelines issued by them uh, because of uh, NGT intervention. There is a National Green Tribunal has intervened in these aspects of uh, groundwater preservation and conservation. So that's how these uh, guidelines have come out. And apart from that, we have specific water consumption. Many of these, we have given specific water consumption uh, indicative figures. For one unit of product, how much one can consume water. And then, uh, of course, there was a water cess which was being collected by state pollution control boards uh, till 2017 under Water Cess Act. And this is abolished after GST is introduced. So this is no more water cess is collected. And they, as a result, nobody Uh, Mr. Sadaka, sir, we lost your voice in between. We're not able. So, can you hear me? Uh, sir, we are not able to hear you. So now we can hear you clearly. Okay, can you hear me? Sir, we had lost your voice in between. Now, yeah, now it's fine. We had lost your voice in between, sir. Okay, uh, uh, because I think uh, there could be some. Uh, internet. Uh, dis yeah, yeah. Sir, if you, uh, sir, if you want, you could, uh, sir, if you want, you could switch off your video and speak. That would allow you more bandwidth. No, uh, there is no problem. I am uh, sitting in an institution, right. so uh, there should not be any All issue right, sir. as far as uh, this okay, is. Sir. Now it's fine, now, sir. Now it's fine. Yeah, we have really, uh, but uh, still, if you of that. So, no, no, no. Now, now it's fine, sir. Okay. All right. So, so now it is fine. Uh, Okay, the, the, thank you. So now, as I tell you, these are the uh, water cess uh, which was abolished uh, or it is uh, no more uh, existence uh, from 2017. And uh, as a result, we don't have any record or any uh, fresh records of uh, what is the water used by the industry. It is not mandatory and it is not required as of today. And the recent developments that they talk about is uh, 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 the many industries now they started sourcing water that is a sewage. It is not the fresh water, but they are taking a, a sewage which is continuously available because you know that uh, any of these waters, are especially, is very difficult to get unless you store uh, through a reservoir or something. So throughout the year it is not available. So as a result, 
people are now started sourcing the sewage from the municipalities which are located nearby and they treat themselves and then captive they use so this is what the recent trends as far as uh, regulations of uh, water use is concerned and as I to the groundwater guidelines so just i will take you through the main important issues so the no objection certificate issued by central groundwater authority is only given for uh, those regions which are safe so if a uh, groundwater is uh, over exploited zone then the groundwater moc is not issued to the industries except for msme micro small and medium industries only they get this uh, moc otherwise in the over exploited zones they have totally there is a ban similarly for expansion of the existing industries again they are not permitted if the water is required more than what is uh, presently used and uh, of course they have to pay now there is an introduction of abstraction and restoration charges they have to pay all these moc holders and the industries which are having more than 100 meter cube per day as a kilo liters uh, if you are uh, using per day then uh, you have to do annual water audit so there is audit required how much you are actually able to harvest water and how much water you are using so these are all going to be documented and based on the audit reports so the central ground water authority will take further view in the year renewal and then uh, there are the directions that uh, all the industries have to reduce in the next 3 years their consumption of ground water 20% so there is a target is given and every industry has to cut down their uh, requirement by 20% in 3 years of course for green belt and other uses horticulture they must use only recycled water so they cannot use fresh water straight away and uh, whenever there are industries are there wherever they are there which are of polluting in nature chemical industries pharma industries or uh, tanneries and that kind of industries they cannot uh, do the harvesting and then uh, recharge the ground water because there is a uh, threat of uh, getting this uh, harvested water contamination and thereby you are actually contaminating the ground water so uh, that's why if you want to harvest the water in these polluting industries uh, big premises you have to do only through surface storage tanks and this water should be used only for captive purpose and uh, water level monitoring is required again a piezometer or some uh, mandatory requirement is there if your industry is consuming more than 10 meter cube per day okay so as i told you 100 meter cube per day is requiring auditing but 10 meter cube per day is required uh, for doing the level of monitoring so the ground water levels how they are going up and down this is also monitored and you have to submit this data there is a web portal created by central ground water authority and there you have to submit this data and noc is general renewed for 2 to 5 years so depending upon the type of industry and uh, quantum of uh, water you require and where they are located so the maximum they can give is 5 years and minimum they can give for the renewal is only for 2 years and violation any of these conditions violations they attract uh, rupees 2 lakhs to 10 lakhs so the, the noc so far the uh, conditions whatever they are there uh, the central government authority they were asking central pollution control board or state pollution control board to verify these and inform them but so far there is no penalty but now they have decided to put penalties on these violations and uh, of course uh, you have to apply uh, renewal 90 days prior to expiry of this and you have to submit those uh, contents reports of audit and others and if any illegal uh, extraction of groundwater is there uh, any illegal industries or uh, illegally they are uh, uh, putting any tube wells or extracting the water then there are environmental compensation charges which the cpcb has formulated and then these based on this uh, they these will be levied and uh, deputy uh, commissioners or district magistrates and district collectors they are all authorized to look at these unauthorized abstraction structures and uh, they can launch a prosecution and also impose easy charges this is a overall nutshell as far as the new guidelines are concerned so i thought that this will be helpful for the people who are uh, just uh, uh, coming on board for this meeting or this webinar 
so they can know about these latest uh, developments. Then when we are talking about the uh, standards and norms for industrial effluent, this is where the Central Pollution Control Board is given the major mandate of coming out with the standards and norms for industrial effluent management. So we have industry specific charts and guidelines are developed by us. We have comprehensive industry documents which talk about how uh, if they are involved in a particular uh, manufacturing a product, so what are various routes through which they generate uh, based in the form of uh, effluent or uh, emissions or hazardous waste. So these streams are well laid out and the metal balance is provided and the technology which is there to take care of these waste streams, these are also mentioned in these documents. So these are very comprehensive documents uh, similar to the BREF documents in Europe and other places. And then we have uh, categorized the industries, red, orange, green, and white, uh, and uh, throughout the country, all the state pollution control boards, they adopt the exactly same categorization so that uh, the consent management, the consent issued to the industries are having the similar uh, frequency, uh, even the inspections, they are done at the same frequency at which you are recommended, okay? So, for example, a white uh, category of industry, you don't require to have the consent to be issued, and it, once they give NOC or once they give a document, then it is valid for lifetime. So, like that, uh, there are the certain norms are there, which everybody is asked to follow. And uh, we have uh, right now more than 56 in the sectors where uh, the emission norms are there and more than 44 sectors uh, different standards are developed. And uh, specifically, if you look at them, there are uh, agro-based paper mills. Generally, they have the issues uh, with lignin and others. Uh, the chemical recovery plants are uh, recommended or mandated. And the water conservation measures in paper, sugar, textile, Specifically, we have come out with those uh, guidelines and the charters. And then for some of the industries, distilleries, we recommend for zero liquid discharges. So these are some of the uh, issues which I would like to point out here when we are talking about industrial water and the effluent management. And apart from that, the majority of the small scale industries and the medium scale industries, they are part of uh, common effluent treatment plants which are managed in an industrial estate or industrial uh, uh, rather like, uh, coming together and they want to form a society and they would like to have a common uh, treatment facilities. So that's what actually about uh, 200 and odd such a uh, CTPs are there in the country, which we do performance also. And then we have the tough norms. And uh, of course, we get the data from about uh, for more than 4,000 industries. Uh, which are falling in the highly polluted we call 17 categories of industry. So these are the certain things which we do, uh, CPCB. And uh, if you have wanted specifically for the standards you are making, uh, you can go to CPCB website. This is the web link where you can see uh, there are standards uh, they are given. And if you go to the bottom of that uh, standards list, there is industry specific standards. This is what uh, you can look at, uh, the industry's names are given, and then uh, the moment you click there, you will be able to see what are the standards, both emission as well as effluent standards. Otherwise, these are also notified uh, under the Environmental Protection Act, uh, EPA, and these are available on uh, Minister of Environment and Forest their uh, website also. So these are the standards and norms where you can get, uh, and one is looking for them specifically. Then we are uh, going into the next part, that is, uh, what has been the impact of recent regulatory development and measures? See, there is a, a, ultimately the effluent uh, or the waste which is which it has to reach the aquatic water bodies in the country. So rivers could be a, one of them, or the lakes, ponds, and uh, other uh, like uh, groundwater. They are all called aquatic bodies where they are the recipients of uh, treated industrial effluent or uh, municipal effluent sewage. So uh, now the system, recent regulatory uh, developments are, we go from uh, a river 
and uh, try to source it to which uh, who are responsible for this kind of pollution. You can see here, uh, one of the stations I have just displayed uh, this, uh, this is a real time water quality monitoring of a river, River Kali, which is a tributary of uh, River Ganga. So you can see that uh, we have given a series of parameters on left side, and uh, some of these are highlighted, which they are uh, already uh, breaching the river water quality. Now you know that uh, there are these uh, alerts are generated and you would like to do some uh, going back into the sourcing of these uh, effluent who is responsible for this so for that uh, systems like uh, we have a centralized system you can see the central pollution control board this is a central portal uh, where you will be able to see uh, the scenario of exceedances at any given point of time you will be able to get this in real time who are responsible for uh, this kind of emissions and the effluents exceeding. So I can just go there, click, and then I can find out which are the industries. Same way as I told you, the river, I am able to go back and the source. Here also, I will be able to actually look at those industries which are responsible for such kind of uh, violations or accidents. Okay. So this is a, a very useful tool uh, already in place. And I must tell you here, uh, this is a passive regulator, not an active regulator. So this alert system of scenario of exceedances is created by CPCB in order to control pollution in the minimum possible time. The moment you find any exceedance takes place, industry also gets an alert and also regulatory authority, and industry is expected to take corrective action and inform back to the regulatory authority. So the minimum time is just before some told about the pollution. Earlier days, we used to actually have some inspections done once in two months or once in three months. Then only such kind of exceedances or the violations were detected. But today, you are having a technology at your fingertips where you are able to actually monitor them and be able to pinpoint exactly where are the issues and which are the industries require more attention. Okay. So, so what actually we have already done and now what are the being steps taken sure to make uh, these uh, compliance of the regulations so so many norms so many regulations are there as i told you so we are now actually only relying on passive regulation rather than active regulation so the industry is responsible for both it is mandatory for them to look at the production as well as pollution control they cannot simply say that pollution control will be a given least priority or the lowest priority so that they let uh, somebody look at uh, uh, junior level. So, in fact, uh, most of this information is uh, flagged at the highest level, the industry. The factory manager is supposed to look at the data of every day, uh, how many exceedances are taking place, and report back to the regulatory authority. So, the CPCB generally we inspect these 17 categories of highly polluting industries. And based on the computer software we used to do till 2015, and now we are doing based on these SMS alerts. We started from 2017 onwards, so there are SMS alert system generated in the portal which I have shown you previous. So based on that, a physical inspection is done, and that, uh, samples are collected, and all non-complying industries they are either prosecuted or issued the closure direction, and also environmental compensation charges are build on them. Similarly, we have uh, uh, industries uh, which are called grossly polluting industries. And uh, these are, again, I'm just taking out some of these industries in Ganga. So the, specifically in Ganga, I'm just giving you the status. Uh, there are 815 which are connected out of 1100. And the remaining industries, they are all asked to close down their operations because of their uh, non-disclosed or unable to provide the required information. So then out of these, then again, we have asked them uh, some uh, notice and then uh, closing them. And this is a continuous process. So there is a, every year they are supposed to be inspected physically also, which is a PMO directive, and we do this kind of uh, inspections. So the, apart from that, the state pollution control boards, they have their own uh, regulations and uh, their uh, regime where uh, they declare uh, what is their uh, frequency of inspections done and also the same data which I have shown you. 
be helping you to deal. We adopted by the state. So the plan there, inspections and uh, uh, looking at the industries uh, based on their uh, manpower and the resources available. Okay, I think uh, that's what I have uh, to share with you. So I will be very happy uh, if uh, I have any yes. queries uh, <laughs> questions from you. Thank you.